Good evening and welcome to the campus of Grand Valley High School for tonight's OHA, OHSAA District Finals matchup between the Western Reserve Blue Devils and the Richmond Heights Spartans. Hi everybody, Matt Murray and Jordan Barber on the call for you here tonight and it should be another really good matchup here. Obviously, if you get to the district's part of this tournament, you're obviously a good team. You're meant yes. to be here. Weeded out all of the uh, teams that may or may not have belonged there in the first place, but it weeded out the, co the weak competition. Now all that's left is tough competition here from here on out. And as we've seen from these two teams, the roads they took to get here was a little bit difficult, some a little bit more easier than others, but yeah, still a let's go tough road to get here. Talk about that road that they took to get here. First up with our friends over here at Richmond Heights. They got that first round by. Yes. They got in on that sectional final game. A three seed versus a 31 seed in Cardinal out of middle field. Won that game pretty easily, 69 to 22, and it seemed to get easier for them as they yeah. got into the harder rounds, which is normally not what you see here, but yeah. they went off against their friends out of Newton Falls, a 23 seed, again, against that three seed here in Richfield. Pardon me, in Richmond Heights, and, La and Richmond won that game 61 to 10. Just They've 10 points 60 given points up there. in both of their playoff games it's so far. It's been impressive here from what mm -hmm. they've been able to do. Meanwhile, over here for Western Reserve, the Blue Devils went up against Rittman and won 63 to 37. So they've gone up there as well. Their next game, not nearly as many points. They subtracted 10 here, so 53 to 41 over Maplewood. And then they were able to beat Canton Central Catholic. A 14 seed here, 40 to 19, so 21 point difference there. So they're looking to try and maybe slow down yeah. these Spartans in their offense here. You're gonna have to be fast and furious if you're gonna score 60 or more points at this level here for the girls game. So you're gonna have to be able to slow them down here, play some good defense, yes. and then just stick to your normal game. You and I have seen them this year. These Spartan, these what, the Blue Devils, part of me here, not the Spartans, but the Blue Devils and. They've been fast, they've been furious themselves here and have played some very good basketball. So again, just slow down these yes, Spartans and, and you should have a good time. But definitely so far in the postseason for either squad, these, this, these teams are the toughest that they've had to face. Right now, I think it, this game will be a Spartans lot closer. Than won the tip, ones. Hall has it, passes this one off. Here's a long three up, off to the side. Ball is tipped and stolen back here by the Spartans. Into the corner here and they get it back over to Hall. He's trying to haul this one over to maybe a teammate. No, just trying to move forward. Found the lane, floats one up, gets taken down, no foul. And the shot's no good either here. Rebound here by Quincy Miller for the Blue Devils. And they move it down in transition. With it now here, Kappa Bianca tries to get this one back out to the safety there of Olivia Hughes. This one tipped out of bounds. Mouth of Hall is intended there for Miller. And now the Blue Devils will get the opportunity to inbound here from the sideline. Just trying to make up their mind who's going to take the inbound here. Coming out now is going to be Angelia Capabianca. Pardon me here. Angelina Capabianca gets that one out here to start things back up here to Miller. This one pass back out here to Capabianca. Tries to get this one low now to Hughes. The shot goes up, shot goes in. And the first two points here to the Blue Devils. Didn't quite catch you put those two up there, but in the meantime, Honor Hall has it here. Tries to pass this one off here on the line. The shot's up, off to the side, no good. Rebound comes back to him here. Shot, no. Foul's gonna be called instead. On the floor against Richmond, so it's going right back over here to the Blue Devils. Well, they have the scoreboard up there at four points, but they don't have it actually being recorded yeah, up updated. there tonight. <laughs> so that doesn't help us here either. Does not. Well, we'll check that out around halftime, but Ooh. at the moment here, that ball goes Overshot out of bounds it. right over to the scorer's table. Overshot, as you yeah. said. Passing it to the official scorer, which is not a player. So, turnover. With it right now, Maya Johnson gets it right back over to Hall. Seems to be a playmaker here for the Spartans. In front of the Blue Devils bench, trying to get around here. Gets around the defense. There in Miller, a whistle's blown. Another foul here is going to be called. This time it looks like it might go against Western Reserve. It will. So a little bit too much contact here. Six minutes and 28 seconds. Still to play here in the first quarter. Well, now curious they're putting up the fouls. Oh, and now not they, the points. No points, though. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> not sure if they know either. Probably Here's not. a three taken from the corner. Up Got and it. in there for Elena Scott to give Richmond their first lead here. Western Reserve here. Brings it back in, passes forward. 
Trying to get around defense, they do, but has to back out here. One step taken, and a travel is all that took there. Is that one big stop there by Quincy Miller. Well, the refs are not very lenient with that. As something to note here with those benches we can see here in this game. Only two players on the reserves for the Spartans. The shot's up and good. Another three is counted here for Richmond by Icy Darden. Seems from what we've seen there, there two though. points, yeah. But a much larger bench there for Western Reserve as I was finishing up there here. Yeah, sorry. No, but it's all good. They, uh, hey, a fast game. You're just trying to keep up with it. Yeah. Here's a shot for three. Up and this spot. good here. Number 34. And oh, I was going to say, Richmond. Bianca. Hitting them with those three-pointers, but, well, they could do the same, just as you've seen there, making this a one-point game. With it right now, Hall has it again, looking for her teammates to move around and scatter. Passes off, gets this one over now to Maya Johnson. Johnson moves forward, a whistle's blown here, and a push-off here against Western Reserve. Another defensive foul is going to be called here against these Devils. Now a whistle blown, and they're going to tell them to take the inbound here from the baseline, not the sideline. We need to check in right now here is Kaylee Williams. And they're gonna let her check in before the game actually gets going here from this inbound. She'll take over for Quincy Miller. Quincy Miller, she has both the fouls so far committed against, uh, committed for her team, so giving her yeah, just, just some, to let her cool off here, that's yeah. all. Here, Hall's again. three is short, ball is tipped, and saved at the baseline here for a second by the Blue Devils. Only for it to be taken out of bounds here by number 2-1 there and Malasha Homer. So another baseline inbound coming here for the Blue Devils. Five minutes and 10 seconds on that clock. And it comes out to Miller who's checked back into this game. Took the ball there from Lisa Eichert. Eichert gets this one back over to Miller. They try and get this one towards the corner. Nice take here by Ramsey. Trying to move forward, got blocked out. Passed off and they'll continue to move it around. A nice tip by Honor here, and she puts up an easy, easy bucket here for Richmond. Bad pass there was intercepted, a little bit too short. It's the first. And was able, she's able to get her hand in there and take it away. The first double they've gotten here tonight. The other two point, pardon me, two scores they've gotten here have all been from beyond the arc. Couple yes. triples so far for them. Shot no, they pass it back out to Eichert. That shot goes up for three. Rattles around the rim. Doesn't want to stay. Back with it here are the Blue Devils. Passes back out. Here's a long three Another through one. contention. No, that one's off the back of the rim. Out of bounds. Officials say Spartans ball. You were saying. I forget. <laughs> Fair enough. Four minutes and 22 seconds to go here in the first quarter. One possession difference here. Eight to five is your score. With it now here on her hall. Leaves the player in the dust as she falls flat down. The shot's up. No good. Off of the hook shot. And it's rebound. rebounded here perfectly by Kappa Bianca. Yes. And slows it on down here themselves before finally passing it back forward here. Has it over to Eicher. And almost got fouled. Lucky they didn't get called on something here. Kappa Bianca in the corner. No three taken. Trying to pass this one in here. And it gets tipped and stolen here by the Spartans. Spartans move it up a little hop in their step two. Bounces back here. Some fans asking for a travel. The other wasn't one to be seen to be fully fair here. With him now here is Scott. Here's a three taken, too strong. Rebound, comes back to the Blue Devils here, making their faithful, made the trip out here. And that's a lot of them here, very happy. Yes, they did. Great, great crowd here for Western Reserve coming out here. Not too long of a drive, about maybe an hour here, give or take, depending on where exactly they do live out there in Berlin Center. Shots blocked and stolen here by the Spartans, and they take it down, almost intercepted, poked and out of bounds by Richmond. Yes, it's going back to the Blue Devils. Well, nice little steal there, but a better, more so bobble. Yeah. After a poke, though, to be fair, by the Blue Devils. Some, some good defense and a costly turnover there for Richmond if the Devils are able to capitalize on it. Quincy Miller with it, trying to get over that timeline, and she does. Passes off here to her teammate in Ramsey, and they try and get it low. Back out to Ramsey, got it from Hughes. Ramsey gets it back to Miller, and they pass it around here. Kappa Bianca gets it low to teammate there in Eichert at Capbianca and these Spartans are everywhere one player for every at Blue Devil a whistle and a foul here a little bit of contact may a holding call here looks like it's going to go against Macy Darden three minutes exactly on that clock here in the first quarter as the Blue Devils looking to tie this game up or at least get it back within one Ramsey inbounding here looks gets it out here to her teammate 
Here's a shot banked off the backboard, no good, and comes right over to the Spartans. Shot sting by Olivia Hughes. Honor Hall trying to move forward, puts it up and makes it look easy. First double digits here are the Spartans. Hall now up to four points. Moving forward here, passing off. That's going to be to Ramsey. Gets it back over here to Miller. Miller gets it low. Here's a shot taken. Up and in for Hughes. Olivia Hughes helping her team get on the board here. Here's a long three taken. Too strong. Very long. Bianca gets a hold of this one. And they get it back over to Hughes. Immediately passes it back to Miller. They just make up their mind. Who's going to bring this ball back into the offensive zone? Still a three-point difference here. Early on in this They've game. Already found one three. If they can find another, it'll tie it up. They can get it back within one with a two. Ramsey takes a shot here too strong. Hughes gets a hold of it, makes sure it doesn't go on. A reverse playoff doesn't sure. work. But a huge yeah. push here goes against the Spartans. Active shooting, says the officials. Free throws are coming here for the Blacks and Reserve Blue Devils. Wasn't sure if that was a shot or an attempt at a pass, but it worked out for him either way. Just kind of throwing it up there and, and hope to find a teammate, and it does. The foul's called for them. Olivia Hughes, the shooter, puts up the first one, and she sinks it on in. Gonna back within two points. One possession still, and it's a little bit easier. Make it even easier here if they can get the second one. Yeah. Not saying it's certain, though. It would definitely help them. Two minutes and two seconds here on the clock. Second one missed, still just two points, though. Hall has the ball, and she's hauling it down the court. Shots up and in here, just breaking through any defense. She's got an answer for everything that these Blue Devils are doing tonight so far. Seems to be a big part of their offense is just speed. Just running past everyone, getting in there and getting those easy layups. Well, what were we saying before this game started? you got to slow them down. Yes, we weren't just talking about their scoring, <laughs> but actually slow them down. you got to be there, play your defense, and make sure they don't have the room to run. Yes. It's easier said than done, but... That's part of the game plan here, or else you're going to have to match their intensity, which is hard to do. Yeah, it is. And it's proving to be hard. 10-8 to eight here. The shot's up for three. Got it. No, maybe not. Beautiful Casey Miller gets her first three off the backboard, and there's your lead here. Pardon me. Up to 11 is the score here. Yes. The scoreboard on the scoreboard other side is, is not, it's not, not up to date. Pardon me, 12 <laughs> to 11. That's why I was getting mixed up here. Yes. Let's just look at our own. Passes off here from beyond the arc. It's a good type of coverage that you need. This is what they were doing at the beginning of the quarter, and they were able to prevent a little bit of scoring. Just got to make them covered up and make them take those contested shots. Hall gets this one low here in the paint. They get it back out beyond the arc. Still no room to shoot. Moving around now as Johnson finally passes off to a teammate in Darden. Back to Johnson Ooh, takes a three. Yep, no good. Bounces off the rim. Height there went to the Spartans, but a foul is called on the floor. Looks like it might be going against the Blue Devils. At least, at least that's so. the reaction. Yes. Now we're getting ready for another check-in here. Coming back into the game, Kaylee Williams. Check-in again for Miller. Officials right now talking to the scores table right now at center court. Not sure if they're trying to figure out exactly. Maybe there's a time differential. 51.9 is on the clock. Now he's looking and talking over to the Spartans coach. I'm not sure if there's just some discrepancy between these two. If they well, think they could that have been talking be about the time. scoreboard. That scoreboard's both of them are in sync now. They're they're saying the same, so I don't believe that's the issue, or they fixed it. No, they are in sync. You are correct. 51.9 here. That is exactly the time. So, so that I might think have been the right. issue. Yes. All shot gets waved off here. Foul before she got it off. Oh yeah, look. One of them saying 49.7 right now. One saying it was saying 49.8 until they fixed it. So the one scoreboard seems to be a little bit lagging behind the other one. Not that it affects any of you watching at home, but still. No, it could, if it, we it get just, confused, that's why. Yes. It also can affect the game because then they have to debate about it. Oh, and beautiful fix it. save. Only for Western Reserve to come up with it. Player down turtled. And they're going out of bounds, I believe. No, timeout's called here by Western Reserve. We'll go ahead and take Good it alongside call. with them. 39.5 to go here. A one-point difference here on YSN. Back here with 39.5 seconds. The scoreboard to our right here is just completely given up here. So we're going to go ahead and just <laughs> stick to what we see over there. A little bit harder for us to see the one to the left, though, because we have the hoop in the way. Yes, but that's, we'll the, make that's here the unfortunate for us. But. Yeah, and anything that benefits us benefits all of you watching, wherever it is you are watching from. Here's a pass low here. 
Still beyond the arc with it. Ramsey trying to get around here. Fakes a shot now, passes off to Miller. Miller at the line, doesn't bring it out. Ooh, she might have she was that close. One. Yes. That was mighty close there with Eichert now with it. Well beyond, they've got 18 seconds line. here. Yeah. Passes off now to Hughes. Olivia Hughes passes low, back over to Ramsey. Still Such nowhere to go. They try and get this one low out of bounds. And the officials say <laughs> Western Reserve's ball. Last touch by number 15 and Meangel Harrell. Possession arrow is pointing towards Western Reserve, so if they're able to score here, they have a chance to double up in the second half as long as no jump balls called in the next 10.6 seconds. I'll go ahead and knock on the wood for you there. Sure. Kylie Ramsey to take the inbound for the Blue Devils. Officials still just trying to come up with something. I think they're still trying to work on that scoreboard. Again, it just seems like it's a lost cause right now. It doesn't yeah. want to work. It's, it's in sync now, but it's... Here's Miller's long three taken, and air that's ball. an air ball. Goes out of bounds. Yes, trying to save it there was Kylie Ramsey, but she couldn't. Ended up bouncing that one out of bounds anyways. Yeah. Six Good seconds efforts. exactly. Another Wasn't there. pair of substitutions. Number 23 comes out. Kylie yeah. Williams is alongside with Gianna Leone. So six seconds here for them to at least just make a stop. All with it here. Three seconds for her, gets over the timeline. One second, takes her shot, jumps up, no good. Close. Although it was a very good yes. shot to begin with, though. Held your breath there for a second. Western Reserve here still right behind these Richmond Heights Spartans. It's a 12-11 game here, heading into the second quarter on YS. Welcome back here to Grand Valley High School, the site of the district finals matchup between Western Reserve and Richmond Heights. Matt Mar Jordan Barber, still on the call here for you, although the scoreboard Really not here anymore to our right. They had them both turned off for a second, and they're still discussing how to get this fixed. Seems to be a big issue here for these officials. Yes, you see that one up there. It's still saying point one on the board, whereas the one over there has everything, right? Yep. So the wire's getting a little crossed here. Yeah. Let's see if I can get that fixed at the moment. There we go. I know we've been getting those colorful bars here. Just because we had something weighing down on our wire, we'll get that fixed here, and hopefully that issue has been resolved just as we're hoping that the scoreboard issue is as well. Go ahead and get that zoom back in for you there as well. Go ahead and get that one centered. Oh, looks like that doesn't help. <laughs> now a big round of applause here. It looks like they might have gotten it fixed after all. That's good. Hopefully no more interruptions of play and we could play on. Yeah, and everybody's nice just clean happy game. that the kids were finally able to come back out on the floor. That's yes. it. So inbounding here for Western Reserve. They had possession. Capabianca looking forward. Yeah, like you noted before we went to break here, they did have the possession arrow pointing towards them. Now with it here, trying to move forward. It's Capabianca. No, pardon me, Quincy Miller with it. Passes off over now to Ramsey. Ramsey still nowhere to go. This Spartans defense still. And the man coverage looks very good here against these Western Reserves. Passes that one over. Almost taken, but a good pass to Eichert. Good, not great, but still has it. And these Spartans, though, right on top of them, trying to get hands in there, making contact subtly. Oh, they've got everything going for them right now here. Miller goes forward, try to get the layup to go. A little bit of a funky release to begin with, and it's going to be taken here on the rebound by the Spartans. Passes this one off here, holds up, now bounces. Shot goes up, shot goes on, and here for number five, Elena Scott. And we've got three more for them. They're really deadly at the three-point line, especially when they just get those clean shots. They've just been able to run around defense a little bit, find an opening, and take it. Right now with it here, Eichert. Under some pressure, gets it back out to Ramsey. Ramsey goes around the rim, now gets this one back over to Capabianca, over to Quincy Miller. Miller points over to a teammate real quick, has it back over to Capabianca. Beyond the arc, now over to Eichert. Eichert here, pivot foot, trying not to walk with it, bounces the ball, trying to push forward, has to get it out to reinforcements there, and Quincy Miller. Tries to get this one over to Capabianca, and it's swatted out of bounds a little aggressively there by Darden. Yeah. But either way, Devils do have the ball here with 6.39. Yeah, 6.38 to go here. Still in quarter number two in the first half. Player gets put down here right now. Fell down. Western Reserve yeah. does not take advantage here of the player down. And they're still playing defense, trying to turn it into offense here. In the offensive zone, Miller gets to found the lane, but her shot let it go too soon. Yeah. Hall now gets this one low and tries to get this one to a team. Oh, he's having some issues right now here with this. Very small table we're working with. Let's see here. Maybe it's because that's hanging. Let's see yeah, if that helps out. Don't, don't touch that's it. That's over to Honor Hall right now here. Gets this here. one back off now. 
to Darren. Darren back over to Hall. Six minutes here as West Reserve crowd getting a little into it right now, stomping their feet, trying to encourage their team to play some good defense, though. There's nothing happening here. Spartans just holding onto the ball. Well, we did see this before in the beginning of the regular season. For the, the guys. Boys, yeah, Niles at Brookfield. He held it for a good four minutes. And they're, they're still do holding the same. on to it. Honor Hall, nobody's pressuring. They need to yeah, rush in and try to take it from her, force her to make a play. 15 to 11 here. Now oh the Western Lord. Reserve crowd really just happy right now. There's a coach talking right now to the officials. Maybe trying to say, hey, they can't do this. But what I see it is tell your team to pressure them. Yeah, bum rush them. Get one Time of your players in there, down. chase them down. 5.17 on that clock and still waiting here is Honor Hall. That's the Mustangs logo still holding on to it here. Coach still telling them to stay you know, back here. This is the reason why the shot clock was invented back, well, back when it was invented. I forget which year it was, but there was a game of basketball where the final score was low 20s, I believe it was, because the majority of the game, teams just held onto the ball when they had a lead. And uh, because of that, they instituted a shot clock. Because if they didn't, nobody would watch the games because it's honestly boring. To be honest, it's kind of boring here, right now. It might be a little controversial, but you know what? You're bringing up a great point here with it being a little boring, but also yes. nothing's happening. There should be a shot clock in high school. Yeah, even if you make it 30, 40 seconds, it, it, either way, like, that's reasonable time. At least you don't have to wait time. six minutes, which, of course, we didn't hear. Here's a shot going up. That one doesn't work. All that for a nice stop nothing. by Western Reserve. All that for nothing. Hughes <laughs> with it here, and now... See if they can make him pay here. Gets it over. Capibianca long three up and no uh, good. Rebound. Up in the air. Player goes down. A big shove there against the Spartans. On the floor with Quincy Miller and they'll get the ball back anyways. They don't have to fight this hard now. Four minutes and 16 seconds to go here in the quarter. This place would have lit up if she made that three. I was hoping for that. Quincy Miller right now with it, looks out here, bounces low, nice pass. Got up. it. Pass goes on in there for Hughes. Olivia Hughes' first two points here for the Blue Devils. Get that on the scoreboard here. In the meantime, with it here, Taylor Hall. Hall looks forward here, and again, no rush. We know they're in no rush. They've proven that their last possession. This time they're passing this one off now to Johnson. Johnson back with it here after a quick stint over in the corner. Johnson back to Hall, takes a three. Up, it's good. Make it 18 here for Richmond Heights. And make it nine now for Honor Hall. It's continuing to impress here for her team. Kappa Bianca here, oh, moved alongside with the slipping. Spartan could have tried to get a three out of that instead. Just unfortunate movement. Kappa Bianca with it again in the corner. This time player is down here. And now Hughes loses the ball off the tip. Goes in, player goes shoved, and it's going to stick here with the Spartans. People happy about that aggression that we just saw there, though. Yeah. Might cost their team, so I, believe sure I don't you believe a foul was called. Well, it was 3.23 to go. And they get it out to Hall again. Yeah, and that's just their go-to player right now. She yeah. knows how to set up a play, and it's working for them. Well, here and we go she's again. Been <laughs> well rewarded right now as well with her points, with nine points. And yeah. yep, standing she around. She is just holding onto the ball again, just killing off even more time. Again, this is why the shot clock was invented. Last time it didn't work out for him, though. It was kind of a dud. Well, they're moving around. Maybe they'll get going a little bit quicker. Oh, it's also a reason why there should be a shot clock, especially in this game in particular is because it's hard for us to commentate when nothing's going on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can only tell you the history lesson of why they invented the shot clock once before it really just kind of gets redundant. Because, Now yeah, some uh, movement here by Honor Hall. Backs up, now passes forward here, gets it right on back, takes a long three up from college distance, and she hits it. A lot of time it works for them. Just get it to big number 11 here. She'll do the work for you. It's more or less what the lesson that they've learned here is that Honor Hall can just get past these Western Reserve Blue Devils. Pass was intended for Hall, as you heard my partner saying, as you saw on your screen. Just lost it. The pass was too far away. Found a hole between two players. 2.19 on that clock here and in the half. Hall gets it back here again. She got it from Darden. Hall has it, and oh, guess what? She's holding on to it for a third straight time. <sighs> 
Well, I don't think they're trying to master 60-plus <laughs> point nights here that we've no. seen the rest of the tournament. I think they're perfectly content with just winning the game however they can. And if that means holding on with no resistance from the other team, then they're going to hold on with no resistance. Well, it seems like the strategy is they're trying to throw the defense off so that what they did the last two times, they waited for some of the players to rush, and then they made a pass to try to get a, a more clearer shot. It's very uh, it's a cheap tactic, but it works. Maya Johnson looking for somebody to pass off to, or a lane. Passes off, now gets this one towards the corner. Gets it back out to Johnson here. And no rush again. Passes back off to Hall, and what does Hall decide to change her corner here and hold on to it? No, passes off. Here's a three taken from Range. That one's a little bit too much, a little little. Off the rim, comes back out. Jeff Bianca passes that one over now to Leon. Oh, I mean, that's huge. Passes that one back over to Ramsey. Ramsey cuts to her left, now looks forward, backs up. Teammates are scrambling before positioning right now. Under some pressure, whistle blown, and Take good timeout time is yeah. going to be taken here by the Blue Devils. we got 58 seconds on that clock here. It's a 21-13 game here in favor of the Spartans here on YSN. Angelina, Gavin Bianca to inbound here for Western Reserve Blue Devils. Matt Marr and Jordan Barber on the call here, waiting to see if Western Reserve has that response they need. The shot's up, blocked, and fouled. Responsible for that one is Rasha Comer here. And they're going to say shooting foul. I agree. Yes. Eichert heads to the free throw line to try and get her first two points of the night. Comes at a big, big moment here. They don't want to be down by too much going into halftime. Again, under a minute to go here in the half. The shot's up. The shot's in. Gets the first one to fly. Look at 14 now here for the Devils. 21-14. They're down by a touchdown. Well, seven points. Yes. Not insurmountable at all. Shots they can make up. it six. And Still they will. Still be a touchdown here, just no yep. extra point needed. <laughs> 21 15. And bringing it back down here is Hall and, and holding on to the uh, ball again. We got 45 Hall. seconds left. In and might as well just hold it out at this point if you're going to hold it to begin with. They're going to try and get one shot probably off. Probably that final probably. shot, I would assume, probably move around 10 seconds if they're not pressured before then. They also will get the ball back. And Western Second Reserve half. is just letting them do this to them. Under 30. So we're getting a great game of stand still and try not to flinch. Great game of dribble. If you really like dribbling, this is your game. She's doing Only a lot of dribbling. it. Look, between the legs. I mean, that like, oh, sweet yeah, move there. That's a skills competition yeah. here on, her, on herself. Now Level we're moving. 13, we're they moving. Well, they got to get that final shot here, Jordan. Gets Nine this one seconds. Through the corner. Teammate wasn't ready for it. Passes back off. Now they're scrambling with a five seconds here. Taken, intercepted, but there might have been a foul. No, a whistle because of a travel with 3.7 West Reserve. Hoping they get that final get shot. shot. In the meantime, though, player down and nicely darting, holding on to her right arm. No, she's I tying she's her tying right her shoe. shoe. Looks like her right ankle is what I was trying to get out there. Yeah, she's tying the shoe. And this game untied. Now she gets an applause to get up afterwards. Did a great job. Mom's probably proud that she taught her how to tie her shoe. Came in handy for this moment. It did. That, that one time when so they were like life two right years there. old, like, oh, finally, finally, finally came in paid handy. off, exactly. Finally. <laughs> Big moment. 3.7 <laughs> seconds to go here. <laughs> Got to go the distance. Good, good position to start out. Iker gets this one over here to Hughes. Hughes with the second up, and no. <laughs> Halftime here from Grand Valley High School. Close. Richmond up 21 to 15, a six point game, two possessions. As you can see, a standing ovation coming here from some of the Western Reserve faithful. As they're still fairly happy with the performance they've seen here from their girls. And they, it hasn't been horrible here. It just not sucks, it. though, that we've seen more standing than basketball here in this game. Yeah, especially in that second because quarter. Because of these Spartans mm -hmm. just knowing they can. There was no pressure there. I know that you're trying to keep your defensive positioning here, Jordan. I get that you have a strategy and you want to stick to it. Yes. But you're also running out of time. And if they get the score here, they're just going to keep driving it up here. And who knows, in that second half, that could really come back to bite them in the, yeah, if, bite them in the behind here because you go up they, by four points because of that. Well, that four points could make the difference. Yeah, if they kill two minutes for every shot they take, even if, I mean, they did it three times and they only made one shot, but that was a three-pointer. Like, that three points... You lost six minutes, and now you're, you're still down by at least three points and more. Right now, they're down by six. So they need to find two three-pointers just to tie it. And if they keep doing that and letting them waste time like that, I mean, they could it could take them to the fourth quarter just to even tie the game up, and that's not including if they keep scoring on them. 
Welcome back to Western Reserve High School here in Orwell, Ohio for tonight's OHSAA District Finals matchup between Richmond Heights and Western Reserve. I'm Martin Jordan Barber on the call for you here still tonight and well, we finally have an answer as to whom scored those first two points for Western Reserve. It was none other than Lisa Eichert was able to put those up and in. I know that you and I were just still kind of scrambling to get our bearings here, so able yeah, to get that Yeah, we missed the shot and now. so did the scoreboard miss the shot as well because the points weren't up at least at the beginning of the game. But we had scoreboard issues that seemingly were resolved in the second quarter, and hopefully that will remain that way for the rest of the game. Big shout-out and thank you to the Western Reserve and Richmond Heights scorekeepers for helping us figure out who put up those two points. In the meantime here, starting off with this ball, are the Richmond Heights Spartans, and well, Jordan, One right more back of the to same. it. You know, I was looking up at halftime. There's uh, 27 states so far in the Union have um, the shot clock at some kind. I don't know if it, some of them don't fully implement it. Maybe some of it's only during postseason, but 27 states have it. And it's almost always 35 seconds. I think that's reasonable. Maybe you only include that for playoffs. I can understand that because it does cost. Well, you know, you'll have to hire someone to operate the shot clock or the scorekeepers would have to do it. So maybe just postseason, but still. Or you could do it kind of like how soccer keeps a track of stoppage time where yeah. the officials are the only ones who know. We can kind of bring a little bit of a European they, they can, feel They to can this. get themselves and a little, a little, a timer, little in timer in their hands. And they yep. just keep track of it, and then they blow their whistle if they ex if they exceed the time. Yeah, I think that could work. That way you don't have to pay anybody extra. And, that way, and it's you know, really not much extra for the officials either. All they have to do is just make sure they press the button. They can shout out too in 10, 10 seconds, 5 seconds. Yeah, exactly. Just let, let them they know how them much time. they have left. Exactly. You know? Every 5 seconds or something, say 5, yes. 10, you know, exactly. It's it's doable. It, all seconds, all it takes final, would exactly. be the OSH, the OHSAA ah, to so just. Now you're doing it too. <laughs> I, 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 I do it all the time, man. All it would take for them is to just to just look into it and implement it. Maybe try it out next season. Do it in a limited number of maybe meaningless games just to see how it works. And if it works, roll it out across the board, across the state. You gotta. A uh, minute and a half later, here we still are. Yeah. Watching Hall hold on to this ball and just Pretty sway much, back uh, and forward. We'll yap in a little bit, but that's basically all we can do right now because there's not much to talk about in this game. It's, well, it's, it's not a game right now. It's just a dribbling contest. And she was doing some skillful it's moves contest. there. It's just Hall holding on to it. She herself. was doing she's dribbling tricks, but she's not doing anything now. It's just dribbling. No between the legs, no trick shots. I guess we could just pray that she accidentally double dribbles and, and it turns over so we get some action. <laughs> For all of you who decide to tune in tonight, um, we're appreciate sorry. you for tuning in here and paying that $10 to watch this game. I know this doesn't feel like $10 worth of action, and if we could do anything about it, we would. Yeah. But nobody is advancing, and it's been over two minutes. Five minutes and almost 30 seconds. Almost well, two and a half I'm going to take a nap. Wake me up when there's action. <laughs> I might be at the end of September there. Oh, boy. Hall still holding on to this ball here. May look like she was going to move a little bit to the left here, but no, decides to stay put. Would have been the most action we've seen here in the first two minutes, period, other than them just getting over the timeline. But again, to your point, there should be a shot clock. There should be at least 35 seconds. That is fair for a high school. Yeah, it is. 35, it is. Or 35 even 40, is more if you reasonable. really wanted to be that generous here, yeah. at least we wouldn't be holding on for almost three minutes, four, three minutes exactly here of play time. It's been three minutes. It has been. And she has just nothing. held on to that ball, has stared right over at her opponents, and has done nothing. Coach is standing there, and he's looking over at the Western Reserve coach, who's barking orders at his players, but they're not doing anything. They're just looking at him. If he's just telling them in the different ways to just stay the course, they're going to win this game. They're they gonna are. They're going to lose this game, pardon me, really quickly. Well, Richmond's going to win because win, they're yeah. just going to sit and do nothing, and it's almost halfway through the, the third quarter. And nothing happened. It would be their easiest way to get to regionals, I can tell you that much. Cheap way, but it works. That's all well, I'll say about that. Three their and a half offense minutes. in the first quarter was, was built on speed. They, they were getting through really quickly, getting up those quick layups, or they were, they were playing, you know, like a, the passing game to try and get an open shot, taking it and, and making the three-pointers, but... It seems like Western Reserve's defense was clamping down a little bit in the second, so they just opted to go with this yep. cheap tactic and to uh, well, because... Speaking of that here, we have now officially reached the halfway point of the quarter. They've ran up the score on every team that they've played. They've played over 60 points for both games. They finally play a team that knows how to play defense, 
And it seems like they don't know how to handle that, so they're just trying to get this game over with exactly. while they have a lead. Up six points there. It's, it's uh, like I said, it works, but it's cheap, and it, it's terrible. If this, this is their is, tactic. This is the if it's to just cower like this here yeah, on, and, and, plain, and just plain sight here, and just hope that the other team doesn't pressure, which right now they're, they're fortunate not. here. It's, 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 and then they're not reserve going. isn't Eventually doing anything somebody, either. Eventually, somebody, if they yeah. do win this game here, eventually Unless they're, they're going to be somebody who's not going to put up with this kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and they're going to pressure them, and they're going to get eaten up. This is this not is a winner's mentality. This is the type of game where, where you see, you know, people get more, players get more aggressive. They think, hey, that, knock it off. Maybe get a push or shove and or something part of me is wondering Not here. endorsing that. I'm saying that's the type of stuff that Five minutes have been played. And a part of me is wondering. Yeah, five minutes. That's just wow. Can we go a whole quarter? At this point, you know what? Well, our record is six minutes. For a boys game at the beginning of the and season I don't even here, think they we were out that. at Brookfield yes. here. And it was against Nihilus here. I'll tell Brookfield the story and I'll let you get your time out here. Go ahead. We were out there calling a boys game for Brooklyn and not Brooklyn. Shoot. Excuse Brookfield. me. Brookfield you're, you're and close. Niles here. Yeah. Well, not really. but <laughs> Brooklyn, Brookfield, whatever. Go Brookfield on. Brookfield and Niles here. And they were playing, obviously, basketball. And yeah. we were, I believe, at the, near the end of the second. They played a good second two quarter, minutes. Yes. And then somebody from Niles decided to hold on to the ball. And for remaining about six minutes of play, we were just watching them hold on to it. Somebody finally tried to move forward. I, they passed yeah. off, and they backed off again. This was Niles holding on to it. Brookfield was just as docile here as Western Reserve has been here in this game. And we're at the two-minute mark here, ladies and gentlemen. It's been six minutes of nothing. Just listening to me and Jordan yap on about, well, not the game. Other games, yeah. I don't even think when Niles did that, I, did, I genuinely don't think that was their goal. Brookfield's defense was really good that game. They were preventing them from getting inside the arc, so they were they were just kind of standing around trying to find something, and then he just kind of clicked. I forget which player it was, just clicked in his head like, they're not doing anything. I could just stay here, and he did, and I think he was just doing it to test to see how much the Brookfield defense would tolerate, and eventually that's when they started to rush him, and Brookfield ended up winning that game, um, by the way. Not that that really, uh, not that that's a oh, sign of we have some to come, but... No, Hall False picked this out there. She was moving a little bit. Had us. Nope. Had, had us, us in the first half, not going to lie. Not going to lie. Yep. But, yeah, that, was, that, that game, Seven at the half. time, it was funny to me because i just never seen that happen before. I remember I was laughing. I was like, what the heck is going on here? In the sixth half. Now it's just kind of uh, now it's just kind of boring, kind of, it's kind of dumb. You can see some of the Western Reserve faithful getting up and trying to encourage their teammates to come in here. And now, more or less, the competitions between the two fans Pardon me, the two fans, uh, sections here, I guess I should say here, the two crowds, audiences for either team, as we've gone under a minute here. As they're just kind of doing a hoot and hollering contest. Finally, some oh moving God, with under a minute to go. It's a, it's a Over miracle. Over seven minutes of nothing. <laughs> they go, oh, Western they Reserve go. steals it, and there's a foul. Wow. wow. We finally get some action, and it's worth it. A foul. And that's the first one here in the quarter with 44.8 seconds. West Reserve can finally try and make them. Pay. Maybe we'll see a little bit on their end here and hold on for that final shot. They gotta, they gotta get the lead, and that's how they gotta end this game. It's perfect. First, they gotta score some points. Here comes come West Reserve. Sorry, getting a little excited here as we finally see somebody moving. Passes off here Ooh, to Quincy Miller. Thought about it. Puts up a two instead. No good, and it's rebounded by West Reserve. 30 seconds in the quarter. Oh, this is unbelievable. Quincy Miller with it here, passes back off now over to Hughes. Hughes gets below, passes off. Ramsey has it, and it's almost taken by Hall, but still with it. Capabianca gets it back over here to Ramsey. Ramsey back to Capabianca. Three is taken up. No rebound. Back to Hall. 12 seconds, uh, and they're going to rush it down. Hoping for that final shot here. Under two, 10 seconds. Goes out of bounds. Last up, out. Hall, no foul. And look at that crowd up here. Finally some action, and it's going every way for the Devils, 8.3 on that clock. Western Reserve oh, yeah, has yeah. possession too at the end of the end of this quarter. So obviously the arrow did not change because nothing happened for seven minutes. Four seconds, they got a hustle, two, one. Take the shot. Shot clock violation, if it had gone up, but it doesn't <laughs> matter. So ladies and gentlemen, you're not seeing things. The score does not change because Taylor Hall decides to hold on to this ball here for seven minutes and about 10 extra seconds yes. as well. Most oh, of the vast majority of the quarter. Well, if you were expecting a quick game, you got one here. We go to the fourth quarter with nothing changed here on YSN. It's Kappa Bianca to inbound here, so we should get some movement at least to start off some, this quarter. Yes. 
Very, very low scoring game here in the district finals. Winner of this game looking towards regional. Nice pass up. Oh, no, it can't go in too for much. Kylie Ramsey. Too much. Taylor Hall, Harvey Honor Hall has it right now here. Not sure where I got Taylor from. She goes to her corner and she holds on. The oh, pressure, pressure this, this time, time by Ramsey has to move forward. There's something new. The shot's off to the side. Lester Reserve comes up with the ball. Stroud uh. encouraging their Blue Devils. Gets this one over to Ramsey. Maybe they Ramsey just looking really right wanted here. to skip the third quarter. Maybe that's what it was. Moves forward here. It's a six-point difference here. Up, no good, but the oh. foul is committed here by Maya Johnson, and we're getting a Kylie Ramsey free throw opportunity here in the fourth quarter. Steve, some points can be added on to the total here for Western Reserve. 7.21 on that clock. The shot's up. A little bit too shy here. Get into even digits at least here. Back within five, that's still better than six. Don't have to rely on your three ball too much then. If they get to that desperation point, that is. The shot's up, nothing to it. Still no yeah. score here in the second half. Right. Honor Hall with it, moves forward mm. here, passes off. They Hopefully have we'll it, back over. Sometime. They get this one over to Johnson. Johnson with it, looking for Hall, flips it to her, and she's in a corner again. Backs off, well, passes off, so they're still looking for score. Again, just a nice difference here. A nice Ooh. tip as well by oh, Ramsey. Oh, Couldn't steal it off of Hall. Johnson moves forward here, looks out here to her teammate. Fumbled it by Horo, but Hyro, pardon me, able to get a hold of it. Whistle blown, and I believe a timeout might have been called. No, a double dribble against Richmond. Coach over there in sense with the official's call. Doesn't matter. It's going to the Blue Devils with 6.48 to go here on the clock. Now they're discussing it here. If you want to get them over on the screen there, now they've broken it up. But those two, they do they, agree. They confirm. They confirm. Yeah. Double dribble here called against those Spartans. Inbound comes here again for Western Reserve. Olivia Hughes with the ball to bring it back into the offensive zone over the timeline. Time has been the name of this quarter and this half. Passes off here to Quincy Miller. Miller has to back off. Looks to her right here. Passes back over. A whistle and... Leave a foul here as Bianca, I think, got poked there by a player. Oh, pardon me, it's somebody on the fan. Yeah, Bianca got poked by a fan, and the official just came over and ejected somebody. Now they got to get the AD over here because the person he pointed to is just standing there, just kind of shocked. Are you freaking kidding me right now? Might have been a student who did that. Just some contact made there. That's not good, though. Angelina Capabianca is over there, and then she's holding a towel up to her eye. Hopefully there's no blood over there. That's not good, though. Ladies and gentlemen, when you go to a sporting event, please keep your hands to yourself, especially when you don't have glass like hockey here to block you off from the players. Let's go, Devils! It might have just been a warning there to the fan there because nobody's coming over to take anybody out. They are bringing some trainers over here to deal with the injured player, but she's holding it to her eye. And keep an eye on her. Hopefully, she's nothing too major. It's a player over there for the Spartans as well who's holding a rag up. It's Marasha Comer. So, hopefully, both players no are okay. You don't want to see there, anything yeah. happen. Tipped and out of bounds. Oh, well, it goes right over to the fan that the official was pointing at. So, maybe that's the comeuppance. <laughs> Get a basketball, a face full of basketball. Yeah, well, it didn't hit her, but scared her. That's for sure. But it looked like that's what it was, unless there was just coincidence and then a fan was just getting mouthy. Maybe that's what he was just saying warning to. Could have been. We didn't quite catch the events, but well, we no, saw a player holding her eye. In front of us, yeah. the, the ref did yell at that, that girl in the stands there sitting so down there. So maybe somebody was just getting mouthy there. Could have been, yeah. I, I feel like if you had done something physical there, air ball here, rebound, no, doesn't go up third time, comes back to Richmond. I feel like if you do something that physical to another player, or rather just a player, period. You, yeah, you you're not getting out. a They're warning. They're not going to give you a warning. Especially so like if it probably could get hurt mouthed them, off yeah. here. Official heard it, said, watch your mouth. And that was it. Whistle blown, timeout called here by the Spartans. Again, the score hasn't changed here, and it very well might not here on YSN. Please stay tuned for the final. No, I'm not sure how much time is left Five exactly. Five minutes or something left. We'll have it when we get back. Five minutes and 52 seconds here. Still in this quarter and potentially just the game. Comes out here to Honor Hall. Has it and she is still moving forward. Keeping an eye on her. She's the one who likes to hold it. It's taken down here and a foul called against the Western Reserve Blue Devils. 
Hollis heading to the free throw line to try and get some points here in this quarter. 547 here. Nobody seems to be disputing the fact there was a foul to be seen. Both players right now getting some attention there. Again, two players have some issues with their eyes. First shot's missed. Yeah, we're just keeping an eye there. Captain Bianca getting some tape over her head with a patch. So both players doing a little bit of a pirate cosplay. Shots up, no good. Again on the rebound. Comes back to West Reserve. Whistle, and there should be a jump ball. Players getting very aggressive. Put their hands up to make sure nothing gets called any further. Don't want to get any technicals here, and they both have the awareness and the heads up there to not let that go any further. So good on them not to let their emotions get the better of them. And now we're just keeping an eye out here to see. There's just a holding call here against the Spartans, it appears. Western Reserve should get the ball. Captain Bianca comes out here into the game. Might be playing with minus an eye, but no, they still like her. Looks like she is. No, it looks like it was a buffer. It's just eye. on her head. I think she could still see. I don't Maybe think they'd let her action. play if her eye was injured. Sometimes you wonder with these OHSAA refs. You never know. Captain yeah, Bianca with crazy. it right now here. Passes off. I mean, if they let him go for seven minutes and ten seconds, of course, they can't do anything about that. That's just the rules. Yeah. That's something that the OHSA needs to fix. Shots up, no good, but a foul. And, well, not in one, but three point Should opportunity three points, coming yeah. here for Kylie Ramsey. Ramsey's 0 for 2 here in this game and in this quarter, but she's got a chance to try and get three for three here. Get it to 18. Make it a three point game and make it back to two possessions. Pardon me, one possession. Already at two possessions at the moment. Yes. Make it closer. First shot is no good. Off the back. It's a little bit too much there. 5.22 on the clock. I think everyone's just, their their nerves are a bit on the rise. Uh, everyone's taking shots. They're, they're not connecting because of everything. That shot is in. We get some scoring there in the second go. half. Look at that. It's possible. Trying to get a little excited over something here. <laughs> Might as well. 21 to 16, a number changed. How about going two Can we make it three? two? We yes, will. Let's go. <laughs> Calm down there, partner. <laughs> Honor Hall trying to match those two. Misses again. Back to Western there. Reserve. Can they get a run going here? 21-17. Anything's possible. Passes off here. Moves forward. A whistle and a blocking foul called against the Spartans. That's their fourth, I think. Lisa Eichert is trying to move in here. Not much you can do in that situation. That's her first of the game. That's going to be called against Elena Scott. And that's, yet, like you said, the fourth year called against in this quarter, these Spartans. Another timeout's called here with five minutes and seven seconds to go. Here on YSN. Seven seconds here. The Blue Devils have the ball coming out of this timeout after that foul was called. Spartans coach, very animated over there, trying to get his players into a good defensive position. Kappa Bianco with it right now. Holds on in front of her bench, passes that one over to Miller. Quincy Miller with it, passes off to Eichert. Eichert trying to move around. Passes off to Ramsey, almost between her head and her arm. Yeah. Able to hold on to that one. Hall was there, could have taken it away. It's a good play there. Get it back over to Cap Bianca. Long. Gets three, no. Close. Rebound back to Miller. Try again, holds up. No, whistle and a walk. No, a, a double, double dribble. dribble here instead. Well, one yeah. of the two is going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Four minutes 44 here, and the ball goes back to the Spartans. Got a little bit too antsy there. Tried to go for the shot, didn't find it. You gotta, you gotta get rid of the ball once you touch it with your two hands. Well, Hall has it, and she's coming in slowly. We'll see if Western Reserve pressures them this time. No, the idea is still to move, and they kind of juked him out a little bit too. Johnson with it, passes back off now over to Darden. Darden here, gets it over. The Hall over the line. No, they're gonna say it was tipped. Hall gets that one off here. Moves forward here, passes low, tipped out by Western Reserve. It's going to stay uh, here. It is, it is, that is a good call there. Yeah, it's going to stay yeah. with the Spartans. It was tipped off the fingertip of a Blue Devil. It, it looked like it looked like one of their players might have gotten it a little, a little bit at the end, but the angle down there, they probably saw it better than me. So, no, that was a very good call there by the officials. Again, they've been good here tonight. They can't help it that there's no shot clock. Can't hold it against them. Here's a shot up. You can't force a kid to shoot. That just wouldn't be fair. Nope. Yeah. That'd well, be more so. Somebody would come out here and say that they're influencing the game, and then there'd just be a whole fiasco. So they just have to hold on there. And since, it's, since you know you have your rules being the way they are, you gotta obey them, whether you like it or not. Well, I mean, I think that everybody who's been watching this game. Yeah. 
anybody who's been watching this game here tonight knows that both of us are very unhappy here with that hold <laughs> for seven minutes and 10 seconds. There's a push here against the Blue Devils. In the meantime, should be their second. Players in the audience, or not players, fans well, in the they audience. Well, they, they might as well be players here. There seems like everybody's getting a little bit into this. Yeah, yeah. No shooting foul. So they're inbound. Johnson gets it out to Hall. They go over the timeline back at center court and slowly bring it in. Uh, Ramsey there to play defense, trying to get a poke there. No, now passes it over. Tip. Nice. Ramsey touched it last, but it's come back. That probably comes back to Hall at the line. Saved it. Three and a half to go here in the quarter. Here's a three take. It might have been tipped. I believe it was. Good defense there as a player runs into a Blue Devil. And a defensive foul here against the Spartans. Gives Western Reserve a cleaner inbound and entry into the offensive zone. That's their fifth. Uh, they might get free throws depending on how the refs decide to call it. Well, sometimes we see it if it's in the offensive zone, yes. no matter what. And if it's the defensive zone, then, well, they let them inbound. No, they're going to give them up the for shot. Free throws. So these go. officials know how this game should be working here. Yes, they, they have been They've been calling a good game, the, the very little game that they got in the call. Not a lot of holdings. We had three instances of it in the second quarter and one giant one in the third. Again, we all know, and it's all burned in our heads here. Yes. Well, she make this three-point game if she's able to make this shot. First one was no good. Second one's up. And Perfect. Yes, sir. Switched it. Gets the second one to fly. Three points is the difference now. Three minutes, 20 left. Olivia Hughes, 319. With it here. Honor Hall moves forward, tries to pass off. Oh, almost out of bounds. Did she step out? There might have been a whistle. No. I thought I heard, I heard a whistle. A whistle. Yeah, I you're not, you're not crazy. Scream there. <laughs> yeah, you're not crazy. Made, made, made that, that octane there. Just went up to that level. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, nice movement around here. Passes off now over to Scott. Scott with it, being pressured by Kath Bianca. Able to get a scapegoat there in Johnson. Johnson back over to Hall, and she finds the corner again. Passes off now, gets it back to Darren. Darren trying to get that one over. Unclean hit there, but Quincy Miller couldn't get there either. There's a shot taken from distance. Nobody can hit these at all now. Oh, well, they didn't play here. for a Olivia while. They're a little rusty. Passes over to the corner. Ramsey gets it to Quincy Miller. I believe they're trying to find Gaffa Bianca. No shot called here. I believe the foul is called here before the shot was taken against Richmond. Yes, two shots. This is big here for Western Reserve. They get free throws for the rest of this game. No Every matter opportunity when it they get to score is huge at this yes. point here, partner. Can make it a one-point game here. She's able to make both. If not, it's two, or it'll stay three. Either way, one possession. Everything goes quiet. The shot's yes. up. Shot's in. Got it. Oh, not quiet for too long, does it? I'm That's quiet. Now four focus. points here for Quincy Miller. Trying to get herself up to five. Timeout taken beforehand here. That was taken by Oh Richmond. So we got two minutes and 34 seconds to go. Ball is brought out. Go ahead and zoom in and out real quick there, partner. Uh, Shots up and it's good. Got it. Make it 20. Western Reserve not letting that amount of time taken off in the third hurt them. In fact, they're using it to their advantage. Yeah, this might end up hurting Richmond if they come down in this game. Honor Hall here as the defense chants are now being shown in full force here for Western Reserve. Student section and those who showed up and wanted to get as involved with them here. Well, they're getting it. Passes off here, well beyond the arc. Threes haven't been landing. They're going to want to get a little bit closer here than this. And then now here is Maya Johnson. Gets it back over to Honor Hall. Hall here passes off. Gets that one over to Darren. Darren holds on for a second here, but she's being pressured. Passes off here from Hughes. Trying to get a hold of that ball. Ramsey there alongside with Miller. Miller stays as Ramsey stays with Hall. Johnson with it right now here. Maya Johnson looks in. Don't think they're holding on on purpose. They're just trying to find a lane to move in. More pressure being shown here by Western Reserve. A minute and a half here to play still. Almost got Hall it taken away. Yeah. Hall has it. Still can't get it poked out. Passed off here, and they're just moving around. They might be content with one point if they can. Well, victory's a victory, but Western Reserve, they're going to have to get At aggressive. At this point, I think they're holding on to it and just making it look like they're trying. Yeah. That might be the case. Close to that one-minute mark. And it's on her Hall, and now she's not even trying to pretend. She's holding on to it again. They gotta get in there and break that up. Ramsey right there in front of her. Big movement just trying to lose their backs up again. You gotta go in, you gotta go hard. Your season's on the line. You can't let them hold on to this ball. 
Well, we said that they'd have Under to slow him down. Yeah. They slowed it down themselves here. Yeah. Now you've got to pressure them, and a whistle called and a timeout taken here by Richmond. 51 seconds, 51.6 to be precise here in the quarter. Maybe the game. Perhaps. The way this game's been going, who knows how it's going to end. Within 51 seconds, they, they Richmond would be contempt just dribbling it out, but I feel like it's going to be a little bit more intense than that. And you hope it would be at least. Well, we've got some other scores here from around YSN. West Branch losing to Laurel 51-39. to These are girls' scores here, to, mind you. And well, in the third quarter, Howlin losing to Copley just by 4, 19-15 there. St. Vincent, St. Mary up over Canfield. Big time, 52 to 17 Wow! in the fourth quarter. And also in the fourth quarter, Crestview losing to Keystone, 27 to 24. Oh, you know that Crestview there. team and how dominant they've been. That's something. Oh, Western Reserve, they're very familiar with it here. Yeah. JFK down by to Springfield, 36 to 32 right now as well. We've also got some games for the boys, but when we're back here with this girls game, we'll go ahead and focus in on it here. Maya Johnson to inbound here for Richmond. Right now it says one second on. No, that's because they're finishing the timeout. 51.6 on the clock now. A whistle, and they might be checking the time here. No, they're coming over and trying to fix this clump here, players that are all just well, clumped together at center court. Just making sure that nobody's getting a little too aggressive here. Coming to move over a little bit. 51.6, stage is set. Comes out here to Hall. Oh, whistle blown and a foul is called here against the Blue Devils. That'll be their fourth. First of the night here called against Kaylee Williams. I think you're at that point where they will just start fouling. I believe that's actually their third here. Down by one, I don't think you do start fouling in this situation here. I'm sorry, no, no, you're down by one point. You just try to be more aggressive here and poke that ball. Can't let them hold on to it. That's the that's been a big problem here. We've yeah. been talking about shot clocks, and that's obviously an issue, and that's something that should be implemented here, at least between you and me here. It's yeah. something you agree with. Not sure about anybody who's watching. Big call over here to Hall. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. That's a turnover. But you also gotta be a little bit better on defense yes. as well. Yeah. But man, what a blown opportunity here. 48.7. Blue Devils ball. This is their game to win. Yes, opportunity's knocking right now. All they got to do is find a layup. Capo Bianco with it. Passes out, gets it over to Hughes. Olivia Hughes being defended well by Johnson. Passes off to her right to Ramsey. 40 seconds, still time. They could draw a foul too. That would help them a lot. Passes over to Miller. A little skate, but still had it. It's a load of Capo Bianco. No, she can't Stole pass it. it. Taken away here, and will there be a foul? Oh, Ooh. a foul and a huge shove there as well. That might have hit her head. I'll check up on her. She hit her elbow, fell on her elbow in the hardwood. She She's kind of went right. to, to brace herself there, and you just heard the thump. It's a little too aggressive. That'll be the fourth. Now they got to decide, is this going to be enough to warrant a technical? That could be a huge deciding factor here. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. We'll see what they do. They're discussing it right now. Still no call yet. Technical gets them free throws plus a turnover. They got to make up their minds, and they're calling it technical. Well, that shove there, it's a little over excessive. That's what they're going to agree on. Now they're going to discuss a little bit further. I don't think the officials are in agreement right now. They might be saying no. I don't think that was. I think she just fell down. I was just wanting a little bit hard there. That That is the truth with that foul. Yeah. If we had a replay, we'd show it to you. But they'd be looking at it too. So is it a technical or not? That's the question. They're going to call it. They're going to stick with it. It stays a technical here. Shooting free throws now is Maya Johnson. No points for her tonight. What an opportunity here. Big moment. Can she come through for her team and help them out? Can't help the blurriness here with the rumbling. The first shot is shy off the front of the rim. Best she can do is make it two points. Yes, that's big here for Western Reserve. Western Reserve, Reserve could try and keep us here even longer, Jordan. They're going to have to get the ball back, though. They get it back. Well, they not exactly technical. They get the ball as well. That's a good point. They do get it, though. Make it 22. Second one's made here. 
Richmond does get the ball here. I think that's their first of the points technical. of the half. They have not scored. No, you're correct on that. One point here for the entire wow. half. Everything here is coming in the fourth for West Reserve via the free throw. Five. Five for nine. As a team. Miller gets left down 27 seconds here. Get over the line, Hall being pressured, whistle and a foul, and right now, I'm not sure if that was the call or not, but that's the fifth. Should be the fifth at least. That should be free throws now here. Rest of the way, yes it will be. Fourth foul here called against Kylie Ramsey. And oh, who better than Honor Hall to head to the free throw line, trying to cap out her night. All of our points come in the first half though, Jordan. Yeah. Well, 12 points. Whole, whole team, most of them. First one rattles in. Three points. That's the difference. That's something that's been very difficult for both of these two teams yeah. to find is a three, but they could more or less put this game to rest if she puts this one in. This is huge. Big decision. The shot's up. Shot. Oh, waved off. Did they jump soon? Yes. It the did. shot wouldn't have counted anyways. Yes. Erase that from your memory. It's the Western Reserve with 23.7. They need a three. Hold on to your hats. With it right now, Ramsey. Pardon me, not Ramsey, but Hughes. Got it over. Here's a three taken. A little blocked, out of yep. bounds. That should be tipped out off of Richmond. Stays the next 11.4 seconds to Western Reserve. It's been faithful, not happy about that call, but yeah, it was, well, it was, it was correct. She it was did correct. block it, and then yeah. went out of bounds. Nobody touched it afterwards. Mm -hmm. The second chance here for Western Reserve. They got to find a better shot here. Wincy Miller was about to inbound. Coach says, and I agree with this yeah. one. Let's take, take a your timeout. Time. Take your time. You got 11 seconds. This is your 11.4. This is your season right here. You gotta, you gotta talk this through. You, gotta you make missed sure the three-pointer. It's over. Yep. You gotta find the play here. Get a good shot. Find your best shooter, someone you trust in these type of situations. Get the ball to them. Make sure she's got a clear enough shot. It doesn't have to be wide open. She's got to find it and make it so that it's not touched, just clean from hand to net. She's got to find that. Well, we've got some other scores here if we want to calm things down a yeah. little bit Take right now. After the third quarter right now for the boys section here of the playoffs. Archbishop Hoban up over Borman, our two YSN schools, 30 to 17 for the Knights. No score yet reported for Walsh versus Fitch. Out of East Liverpool, no, they're up 58 to 41 over Zanesville, and then Louisville beat Firestone today by a convincing score of 86 Big to 38. For yes, that was for round two, I do believe, of sectionals. So they're getting into their district rounds now as the girls. Yes, girls are finishing uh, off. Yep. Usually a level ahead. Their season starts and ends earlier than the boys. Let's keep that a little bit zoomed out here just in case the shot goes high. Make sure we don't miss anything here. Here's the inbound. Season on the line. Inbound comes. They get it to Miller. Three. No. Out of bounds. And it's going to go over to Richmond. Eight seconds precisely. Let's see if they're able to cook something up here. Oh. What's that? Oh, shoved out a player in Ramsey, and there's nothing oh, off the ball. Now they're going to have to foul here. Hall getting away. Five seconds. They got a toucher. There you go. Goes against Ramsey here. Hall heads to the free throw line. She is one for yeah. four tonight from the strike. And now she has another opportunity to put this game away with four seconds, two possessions. And that's not likely. Not 100% impossible, but they'd have to get the quickest shot of the night here off. Officials are talking over at the scores table here. I think West Reserve's trying to say there should have been a foul before that. Yeah, against off the ball Richmond. when the uh, player was just shoved the on the ground. Shoved, yeah. yeah, she shoved Ramsey. Coach over there for Richmond still getting very, very animated there. Saying like, players. yeah, you that was dumb. You could have cost us the game. Well, that was Hall who did it. it. He wasn't yelling at Hall. He's just trying yeah. to make sure that they're in position here, Jordan. He, I don't think that he has anything to say about that. Why would you? You're trying to keep your spirits high. I don't know. Some move. That's all it was. And that might have just sealed the deal here for Richmond. Yeah, they got to find a three and a two, 4.5. That's, that's five. the case here, man. How big is holding that ball? One's back here at three seconds, two and one. Not much they can do now. Take a half court. Not much there. And Western Reserve season comes to an end. 
Not necessarily the best way you'd want to end things here, but nonetheless, Richmond comes out here and wins by two scores. 24 to 20 here over the Blue Devils. I'm sure you've got plenty to say about this one here. I'll try to keep it positive and not say everything I want keep to say. Keep it PG at least. Yeah, I'll say that. Um, but, well, the first quarter was good. It was a good first quarter. We were in for a big game of basketball back and forth. Uh, Richmond, they, they were playing great offense. Western Reserve defense led a little bit through, but they were getting better. They were clamping down there in the second. And then Richmond realized that, and they decided to hold onto the ball because I guess they just decided, and I guess they were correct, that that was the best way for them to win this game. And then the third quarter, obviously, I can't really say anything there because nothing happened. But that fourth quarter, we saw Western Reserve. They clawed back. They were within a point. They could have won this game if they had more time. And very cheap tactic, but it did work for Richmond. I can't, I can't endorse it. I can't say I... It was a good thing, but it worked for them. Well, That's all I'll say. What's good for them here is that our opinion, it means nothing. Yeah. It's bupkis. It's just here for entertainment. That's all we're here for here. Of course, we have the medal ceremonies here because both teams did make it to this, and we want to recognize here and still applaud both teams here because they still did earn this one way or the other. Even if you don't necessarily feel that Richmond earned it tonight, they still made it here to this point. They still, still played it. one they heck did. of a season here, yes, and they they've obviously are still a very good team, and it is a strategy since it's part of the game. You can't be too upset here because, again, it's part of the rules. You can still hold on to this ball. It doesn't matter. Yeah, they're just there. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and stop talking yeah. about this here as we're getting ready to give Western Reserve the opportunity here to get their second-place medals here in districts. Once they do start talking, we'll go ahead and stop talking here and let them take over. So, please, listen up.